Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we have the brand new Tier 9 Premium Italian Battleship, the Giuseppe Verdi import to review for you guys today. Now, this review is made possible by the generous donation of these Patreons, whose name should be showing up on screen right here. Patreon is the best place to support the channel. I am in no way supported nor affiliated with Wargaming, so all these ship reviews you see are funded by ad revenue from the channel and donations from these generous Patreons. So big shout out to, the, to these guys for making this review possible. If you wish to support the channel, Patreon is the best place to do that besides, of course, just watching the videos and streams. If you want to do that, check out the link in the description down below. Alright, so the Giuseppe Verdi. This is the answer to the question that we all had when the Italian battleships first came out, which was, what if their secondaries shot sap? And it's, uh, it's an interesting answer, of course. Now, the Giuseppe Verdi was, of course, preceded in the game by her sister ship, the Marco Polo. For all intents and purposes, the ships are pretty much the same with a couple of main differences which we'll go through as we go through the ship's stats and such. Off the bat, of course, art department knocking it out of the park here. Of course, this is of course the Marco Polo model, but it is still a very good model. And there are some subtle differences between this ship and the Marco Polo, especially of course with the paint job. Italian battleships, gotta give it to them. The designers of these ships were very, 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 very good with the way the ships look and such. Of course, this is a paper ship, but still, design was drawn up, and it looks beautiful. Alright, so the ship stats. Dive right on into that. Um, my commander's skills and modules have been ripped off of the ship, so the ship is completely base as is. Oh, speaking of getting the ship, um, so y'all know those bundles that they love to throw up? With, like, the Admiral bundles and stuff when the new ship comes out. I don't know if it's because it's Christmas or because of what happened earlier in the year. But the Admiral bundle for this ship is actually worth it. It's the same price as the ship itself, $77. Which, of course, is a lot for a digital item. But, I mean, hey, when we're comparing the prices here, you get more with the Admiral bundle. Uh, you get 12-point commander. You get this Giuseppe Verdi commemorative flag, gets a bunch of special signal flags, and I think a couple of days of premium time as well in there. So if you do want to get this ship, that would be the avenue I suggest if the prices are still the same. But do you want to get this ship? Let's get into that with the armor and such. So same as the Marco Polo, 32mm bow, 130mm cheek plate, 70mm upper belt, main belt is 320mm, stern belt is 32, stern deck is 32, Mid deck is 55, which is nice. Bow deck is 32. Citadel is behind some turtle back armor. And, whoops, it's kind of hard to tell in this port. Um, it is a little bit above the waterline with some of this angling. Now, this angled plate is 25 millimeters thin, so of course, a lot's going to have to go through that at tier 9. But it does have to get through this beefy 320 millimeter turtle back right there. So it's fairly well protected. It's kind of rough to citadel. It can get citadeled if something with enough oomph does get through that, but of course, you got to get through that first. All right, now in terms of her survivability, she has 69,100 hit points. Which is about right for tier 9. I always got around 70. Um, not on the high side, not on the low side. About right. 27% torpedo damage reduction. Alright, her guns. So, unlike the Italian battleship tech line, which is capped out at 15 inch, the Giuseppe Verdi, just like the Marco Polo, does get 406mm 16 inch main battery guns. And this is where the big difference is, well, one of the two big differences is with the Marco Polo and the Verdi, which is their Reload and Sigma. They have the same dispersion, but Verdi has 1.7 Sigma, where the Marco Polo recently was buffed up to 1.9. Now, you might be thinking, Quay, because the Marco Polo has sap. It's understandable why she started out at such a low sigma and eventually got buffed up to 1.9. 16 inch sap hurts like hell. So, yeah, this ship doesn't have sap in her main battery guns, and yet she has worse sigma with the same dispersion. 
Yeah. Now, to compensate for that, she does have a 5 second faster reload time at 31 seconds. Now, you might be thinking, 31 seconds, that's not bad, but wait a second. 16 inch at tier 9 is pretty run of the mill. Most of the other 16 inch ships that don't have 12 guns, like the, uh, the Kansas, have a 30 or sub 30 second reload time. Mississippi Freddy doesn't get that. Now, she had 1.9 Sigma. I could understand why she would have a 31 or 32 second reload time. But she has, thir she has 1.7 Sigma with a 31 second reload time. Yeah. 180 time of these turrets is 36 seconds. Maximum spurge is 253 meters. Maximum range is 19.1 kilometers. Now, her HE just has a 36% chance of starting a fire per shell, which isn't bad. 68 millimeters of pin and initial velocity of 836 meters a second. AP does the maximum damage of 12,600. It comes out the tubes at 836 meters a second, just like the HE. Now, that is screaming fast, and yes, this does have Italian AP. It does hit hard. It does hit really, really, really hard, but we'll talk more about that in the review section. Her secondary is the main feature of the ship. You get 24 of the 90 millimeter secondary guns. These have a base reload time of 4 seconds and a maximum range base of 7 kilometers. Now, the 90 millimeter SAP has a pinning capacity of 26 millimeters. They do a maximum damage of 2,000 and a velocity of 860 meters a second. And again, you get 12 of these suckers per side. That's a lot of secondaries. So, yeah. A lot of those 90 millimeter secondaries. And you get these 152s, which can pin 42 millimeters of armor using the SAP shell. They reload in 10 seconds, have a maximum range of 7 kilometers, maximum damage of 3,850, and an initial velocity of 950 meters a second. More on these later. She does, of course, get an airstrike for the submarines. AA has her A ring is 71, although it's not bad AA, but it is Italian AA, so it is capped at that 4.6 kilometer range, which uh, sucks, especially with the uh, Soviet CVs in game now, which can literally just not give a crap about your AA at all. Maneuverability, max speed base is 32 knots, so a nice quick battleship. She has a turning circle radius of 860 meters and rudder shift time is 16 seconds. Concealment, she has a concealment range base of 16.3 kilometers. And you can't get that down decently. For her gimmicks, she has the exhaust smoke. This is another big pickup from Marco Polo. Marco Polo doesn't have the exhaust smoke consumable. The Giuseppe Verdi does, just like the other tech line Italian battleships. And this can be a useful tool. Again, more on that later. You have your choice of fighter or spotter. Me, personally, I would take spotter because of the maximum range of 19.1 kilometers of the main battery guns. And she gets a repair party, which repairs 345 points of health per second. It's active for 28 seconds and reloads in 80 seconds. You get four of those base. And you get damage con, which is active for 15 seconds, which is actually pretty darn good. The, the American damage con is active for 20 seconds, and that's god tier. This is just five seconds shorter. Very nice damage con here. Reloads in 40 seconds. All right, that is the Verdi's stats and characteristics. I'm going to go ahead and throw my commander and my module build back on this. I'll be right back here with you guys in a second. All right, my Verdi has been kitted out. Let's go through the build that I'm using. All right, so for the module build, of course, we went with a secondary build. Now, there's a very good argument that currently in the game, because secondaries aren't invincible, you don't need auxiliary armaments mod 1. That's true at the moment, but that's going to be patched out, so... In the future, this video is going to be viewed, so I'm not going to say, yeah, run main armaments mod 1 instead. But, yeah. For the current time, if you really, really want to, you can run main armaments mod 1. But, for those of you watching in the future, run auxiliary armaments mod 1. These will keep your secondaries in the fight a lot longer. It increases, well, doubles their, their health, in fact. Alright, then we went with damage con mod 1 because fires suck, and this reduces our chance of, of getting on fire or getting a flood secondary battery mod one of course because this increases the main battery firing range and decreases their dispersion so it makes them a little bit more accurate damage con mod two because fires suck and this decreases our fire extinguishing time and our flooding re recovery time very important things if you're in a battleship concealment system mod one this of course decreases our concealment that's always nice to have lets you disengage easier and then auxiliary armaments mod two this, of course, decreases the secondary battery reload time by another 20%, which 
which is what you need in a secondary battleship. And like I said earlier, I do run spotting because of the main battery gun range. For the commander build, I went with preventive maintenance to keep the main battery guns in the fight. Then I went with grease the gears, which decreases the traverse time of your main battery guns, which is very nice for a brawling battleship. And those close in engagements, you want to have the faster turrets to swing around to the proper location. Then I went with long range secondary shells. This, of course, increases the secondary guns firing range. Then I went with main secondary battery aiming, which this is, of course, a manual fire for secondary skill. This is where, after 45 seconds, the secondary guns get a 50% boost to their shell accuracy. And this gives you a boost to your dispersion and reload time by 10% base. Then I would take emergency re expert repair for your second four point skill. This, of course, gives you another heal, which is very important for a battleship. Adrenaline rush, of course. This, of course, gives you a boost to your reload time as you take damage. And I went with Close Quarters Combat, which gives you a boost to your main battery reload time when there's a target inside of your secondary battery range, which in this case is 10.5 kilometers for the Verdi. And with a 31 second reload time and a brawl, this helps you pick up for it. Now, of course, you could drop this and take something like Fire Prevention Expert, or you could take Concealment Expert as well, and you would get a 13.5 kilometer detection range on your Verdi if you want to do that. Again, that's up to you. This is just what I ran for this review. So what does this do to the Verdi? So, with the secondary guns, this now pushes the secondary range up to 10.5 kilometers and gives you a 2.7 reload time on the 90 millimeter guns and a 6.8 second reload time on the 152s. Her concealment is now down to 14.7 kilometers and her guns now swing around in 30 seconds flat, which is pretty nice and quick. All right, so is the Verity worth the 77 bucks? Well, I'll meet you in the voiceover section for that right about now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, voiceover Mountbatten here. After playing the Verity for a couple of days, it came out a couple of days sooner than what I heard it was coming out. So I didn't get the review off as soon as I would like to because I was working on yesterday's video, which many of you seem to enjoy, which was the uh, tactics tier list video. And I wanted to get that out, of course, because I've been working on it for so long. But it did give me an extended period of time to play the Verdi in preparation for this review. So I'm going to run through the characteristics of her real quick. And after playing her, what do I think about it? So the armor. The armor is pretty good from a bow in position. Very similar to the Roma. If you play the Roma, you know you keep your nose pointed at the target. And you can tank for days, especially with that cheek spot. If you can bait players into shooting that 130 millimeter, uh, millimeter cheek that you got is incredibly tanky from the bow in from the stern out though it's incredibly squishy of course with the ships you can be seeing as as a tier 9 battleship a lot of the tier 10 ships god good god all the 457 millimeter battleships and stuff they're gonna chew you up back there of course you have this weird flat spot on the stern that's 32 millimeters thick which of course 18 inch can go straight through of course so yeah all right now and of course it's flat too so that means that it's, it's flat a lot of battleship guns can go straight through that yeah all right uh, yeah so keep, keep keep your bow pointed in is what i'm saying here in the verity with the armor um the hit points that feels fine like i said in the in the uh port section where we're going through the ship stats it's about right for a tier 9 battleship it's not overly low of course it's on the lower side but it's not like you know like 50,000 uh, a lot of the super crews do have more health than you but you have better armor than them so the guns this is of course the uh, main point of contention amongst the reviews for the Giuseppe Verdi and it should be 1.7 Sigma on 9 16 inch guns at tier 9 with a 253 millimeter maximum dispersion base it's not great it's not great at all however for a close in brawling ship like the Verdi's kind of meant to be when you get in close the guns do hit hard enough to where it makes up for it again it's Italian AP Italian 16 inch AP and it freaking hurts whatever it hits well hurts whatever it hits and pins I should say if you have a broadside battleship or a battleship that's angled enough to where you can pin them, it will slap the ever-living crap out of that ship with those great pins that it's got. 
especially of course ships like the Soviet battleships and the German battleships of course too because they sit high up out the waterline the Germans and they have of course the German armor scheme which means you can pin them quite easily or ironically other Verdes you can pin quite easily too or other Italian battleships any ship that's got a battleship that's got a big freeboard you will likely punch for shoot at least 12 to 15 K now of course they are 16 inch guns which means when you're in tier 10 games not a lot of overmatching for you to do unless you know you're fi uh, fighting battle and cruisers and such but in terms of battleship versus battleship yeah you know unless they give you the proper amount of angle you're going to bounce most of the time and they can be incredibly aggravating to use but again if you get in close they can work and with the 31 second reload time that's a bit disappointing. If they'd given maybe a 30 or maybe... I think you could give this ship a 28 second reload time. And it would have been fine with the current Sigma and dispersion that it has. But for whatever reason, we're going to felt it needed a 31 second reload time. So the other main armament that you have, the secondary guns. So, SAP secondaries. How is it on a battleship? Well... Apparently, in order to balance it, the devs felt like they had to give it some incredibly inaccurate sap. Oh my god, these shells are so inaccurate. And it really hurts after playing the Napoli and her 90mm secondary guns, which are the most accurate secondary guns in the game according to Wargaming. And it very much shows the Napoli when you're playing the Napoli. It is just a laser pointer in terms of its secondary guns. But not here in the Verdi. And it's understandable that it couldn't be anywhere near as accurate as Napoli, of course. Because you have 24 of these guns per side. That's flippin' mental. That's a lot of secondary guns. A lot. I'm sorry, not 24 per side. You get 12 of these per side. And that's still a lot. That's just the 90 millimeters. That's not including the 152s. You get 6 of those per side, too. So it's a lot of crap throwing at the wall, and I understand you can't have the Napoli dispersion on it. But I was expecting at least German battleship dispersion on these on these sap shells, and it doesn't look like it, nor does it feel like it either. So they're not accurate, but you get a lot of them. Against battleships, you'll be hitting a lot, but you won't be pinning a lot because the 90 millimeters can only pin 26 millimeters of armor. Now, if you're in a tier seven game, seeing tier seven battleships, sure. There's a lot of tier 7 battleships that you can pin, but um, not in tier 9 and tier 10 games. Which, since this is a tier 9 premium, it's going to be spending a lot of time in tier 10 matches. So, yeah. And there's no way you can, you, you, uh, you can increase this. SAP, oh, SAP. IFHE doesn't affect SAP. It only affects HE. So, you're kind of boned there. Yeah. Now, again, if you're in a Tier 7 game, seeing Tier 7 battleships and cruisers, well, heck, even a lot of Tier 9 cruisers, you can pin them with your SAP shells. But against battleships, it's not going to happen. And since this is SAP, this doesn't start fires. Which is a big drawback, because you hear me say time and again with, like, the, um, the Palmer. I'm okay with the Palmer and secondaries not being able to pin a lot of Tier 9 and Tier 10 battleships, because she has a lot of them. It's a good reload time and a good chance of starting a fire. You can make up for it there. You can't do that with the Verdi. So, yeah, the, the truth be told, the secondaries really aren't as good. Certainly not as good as we were probably thinking they would be giving SAP secondaries to a battleship. And add to that, too, they only have a 10.5 kilometer maximum range, which is pretty darn low. Now, you do, of course, have the smoke screen consumable that you can use to pop smoke and get within secondary range. Very true. It's a very good tactic, too. It's very, very, very good when you can pop it and someone's spotting the enemy ships and you can just keep your secondaries rolling on them, keep your main guns quiet, and not get spotted. Theoretically, it should work. In practice, Tier 9 and Tier 10, there's a lot of hydro. There's a lot of radar. Uh, I wouldn't really use it for that. It can work if there's on your flank, if you know for sure there's no hydro, or not necessarily hydro, there's no radar, because you can stay you know, within, uh, I'm sorry, outside of six kilometers of the enemy ship that has hydro. That can absolutely work. 
but there's probably going to be some radar. Now, if, again, if you know there's no radar, go for it. It'll work great against cruisers. Against battleships, uh, not so much. Although against battleships, too, you can keep the smoke up and get within optimum range of them. If they're not paying attention, which you'd think there'd be players that could notice there's a battleship-sized smoke screen coming toward them. But like with the Paulo Emilio, you'll be surprised how often they don't pay attention to that. And you can get next to them and blap them with the AP. It's great for that. It, that can work but getting that to work at tier 9 and tier 10 is another story in and of itself so unfortunately in the secondary department it's not as good as we thought it was going to be aa um yeah it's good when the planes fly into your aa range but it's 4.6 kilometers so that ain't happening a lot same as other italian aa from my experience uh, maneuverability the ship does feel a little sluggish with a 16 second rudder shift time i mean if you play the Germans, you know how to cope with this, so not a huge deal. It's slightly more maneuverable than the Germans, and if you're paying attention to you know where you need to angle at, you won't have any problems here. Very fast ship though, thirty-three point six knots without a speed with uh, with a speed flag without a speed boost. That's pretty darn fast for a tier nine battleship. Definitely enough speed to run away once you pop your smoke screen, which is what I use a smoke screen for in the Giuseppe Verdi. It's a great tool to disengage from a fight that you can't win, or if you, you actually sail broadside out in front of a, a Yami or something, if you pop the smoke screen and turn really quickly, you can break line of sight, and now that Yami probably won't be able to snap the guns around. No, actually, no, hell no. It's, it's in a Yamato that's not happening. But if their guns are trained at you and you get spotted for a second, you pop the smoke screen, that way they can't get the lock on you, and now they just got, you know, the crap dispersion with Without the lock and you can sell away from that situation or you know if you run into an old crap situation don't fire your main guns pop smoke and run great tool for that uh concealment you could build into this a little bit more 14.7 kilometer concealment it works for me because again you have the smoke screen the smoke screen is the ultimate i don't want to be in this fight tool you just pop it and run if you're not within radar range which unfortunately if you want to use your secondaries you have to be within radar range of most uh, tier 9 and 10 radar that you, that we're going to meet playing the Verdi. But again, you could build into it, get it down a little bit more, but you can't do like you can do with the Schlieffen and get the detection range down to be your secondary battery range because your secondary battery range is 10.6 kilometers. You get down to, I think, 13.5 with the uh, captain skill equipped. So, all in all, is the Verdi worth it? Well, honestly... Playing this ship for this review, I had a lot of fun in this ship. I had a lot, a lot of fun. I rarely did under 100,000 damage in this ship. It is a tier 9, so that's to be expected. But it's not like it's so crap that I'm struggling to do 100k. I'm not. But this is me we're talking about. Brawling Battleship, Secondary Battleship. That is what I went to this game wanting to play. And that's what I've played the most out of in terms of battleships. So I'm very good at getting into a brawl, knowing when to push, when to pull back, uh, where to aim on the enemy ships. That is what I am good at. And that's the only thing you'll hear me say I'm good at when I'm playing World of Warships. I'm great at brawling battleships. Uh, I'm, I'm overall good in battleships altogether. I'm not like god tier or super unicum or anything like that. I'm just good in them. Above average, I would say. And this is the niche part of the battleship playstyle that I am good at. In an average player's hands, you don't have the chance of starting a fire that you do with secondaries that have HE shooting, which is, of course, the rest of the secondaries in the game besides the Napoli. So you don't have that consistent fire damage that your secondaries can do to fall back on. And the match you're watching right now is the best match I had in the Nap and, and, and the Verdi. 200,000 plus damage game. Of that 200,000 damage... Only about 44,000 damage was actually from the secondaries. The rest was the great pins and the AP of the main battery guns coming into play. Compare that to the Schlieffen, where most of the damage has been coming from the secondaries and not the main battery guns. So, the secondaries aren't that great. You could not build into them, but that's kind of the whole point of the ship. The sap secondaries on a battleship. So, its main trait... It's not very good at doing. Which means that unfortunately, this isn't a very good ship. I would at most give it a 6 out of 10. Mainly because the AP on the guns, when it does slap, it slaps hard. And the armor is good from the bow in. It's a quick battleship. 
and it does have the sap secondaries. And when the sap secondaries can work, like when there's a destroyer spotted, and your secondaries are spooled up, because remember, you have to be firing for 45 seconds for your ma for your secondaries to really get the maximum accuracy out of the main fire for secondary skill now. Yes, it can laser beam destroyers. Well, not really laser beam, more like it's shooting so many freaking secondaries rounds at the destroyer that the destroyer is going to eat some if they stay within the secondary range. So, when that lines up, the sap secondaries can melt destroyers and small cruisers. The cons are... there's a lot. 1.7 Sigma, same dispersion as Marco Polo. It's not like they beefed up the dispersion to make up for the Sigma like they did with the, um, with the Nova Rossisk. The stern half of the ship is terribly armored and you will eat plenty of pins there. AA is short range so against the Soviet CVs and many other CVs it's just not going to work. The 31 second reload time of the main battery guns I think for the Sigma inaccuracy of these guns is absolutely ridiculous. So yeah those cons are simply too big to overcome by the pros. There's quite a few pros but it's so conditioned. Oh, and there's only a 10.5 kilometer secondary range, which is not great by tier 9 standards. So, this ship can work, but so much has to go right, or you have to be so darn good at secondary brawler battleships that it's. <laughs> you'd be better off playing the German battle cruisers, honestly, if you want a lot of secondaries firing at the same time. If you want a sap secondary boat, go get the Napoli. It's so much better than this thing. Your money or your coal would be better spent there, in my opinion. So it's a 6 out of 10, and I was very tempted to give it a 5 out of 10. But the armor and the guns are good enough that at close range it can work, but it's not the best brawler. It's not even in like the top 10 in my mind. Uh, if you want a brawling tier 9 battleship, go get the Palmer. Palmer is so much better than this thing. I wouldn't spend money on this ship. If you manage to pick it up in a container or something in the future, yeah, it's a decent boat. But it's not worth spending money on. That's my review of the Ship of Verdi, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I want to 35,000 subs thanks to you guys. I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas Eve and a wonderful Christmas tomorrow. And I hope to catch you guys in the next one.